and still the unified heavyweight champion of the world from Ukraine, Alexander. Alexander Usyk retains his unified heavyweight world championship by beating Anthony Joshua for the second time in a row, solidifying his status as the top pound for pound level fighter in the world simply by default. Hey Ringsiders, what's going on? This is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer, and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Or if you're new, we make content beyond the beautiful sport of boxing through mini documentaries, backstories, previews, takeaways, and much more. So if you haven't already already and you enjoy that type of content feel free to subscribe thumbs up and hit that notification bell for the latest here on ringside stories thanks so much for your support in advance and welcome to the channel now anthony joshua has suffered his second consecutive loss at the hands of Alexander Usyk, who now holds a record of 20 wins, zero losses, becoming a unified world champion in his second weight class, picking up the vacant Ring Magazine World Championship. Meaning, Alexander Usyk is regarded as the lineal best at his second weight class. So much to talk about. Here are five takeaways from Usyk versus Joshua 2. Number one, post fight AJ. Oh, one. 15 1 13 for Anthony, I don't understand it. How? No, but you, for now, I'm like anybody show, else in the show. You show a good body. And he threw them down. Skills win boxing. Yes. Why? Okay. You're not strong. Did you, how did you beat I'm not sure his team let's understood it. Let's do this. I had character. Okay. Let's do the termination. Let's go. Let's go. Now, in my previous episode, we went more into the psychology and what other people thought. Some people say it was a meltdown. Other people thought it was endearing to see the passion of the former unified world champion. If you knew my story, you would understand the passion. I ain't no amateur boxer from five years old. That was an elite prospect from a youth, bro. I was going to jail. I see some high nickel youths in Reading jail. I got bail and I started training my ass off. Because if I got sentenced, I wanted to be able to fight. I'm a new breed of heavyweights. All them heavyweights, Mike Tyson, Sonny Liston, Jack Dempsey. Oh yeah, you don't throw combinations like Rocky Marciano. Because I ain't 14 stone, that's why. I'm 18 stone, I'm heavy. The facts are that Anthony Joshua has said what he said, surely relieving some of the pressure that he had leading up to this fight ever since he won the world title in 2016, beating undefeated Charles Martin. He's put himself under pressure to fight the best, unifying world titles on multiple occasions on the biggest of stages. And let's remember that was Anthony Joshua who brought back all eyes on the heavyweight division when he beat Vladimir Klitschko in 2017, regardless of some of the peers who had been around for years before Joshua even turned pro. I bust my case. My cousin Benga, where's he at? G14, raise your hand. I'm stealing this music, sorry. But it's because the passion we put into this Yes, Anthony Joshua may have stolen Alexander Usyk's moment, especially with what Usyk's country of Ukraine is going through right now. At the same time, this is a cutthroat game, and if you don't win, it could mean devastation. Well, I'm upset, really, like deep down in my heart. Like, oh, man. Oh. Nah, what? Trust me, I'm, oh. So in my opinion, it was great to see Anthony Joshua care about not winning. And I think he just started a little bit too late in fight, yet he made the adjustment, showed the termination, showed that he can go for 12 rounds and there's still plenty fight left for the 30 some year old Brit. Number two, top heavyweight content. I think the people got what they want. Good fight, but you know, the little guy, Look, I won. As far as the actual fight, it was a great tactical. At some point, 
high speed chest match. Alexander Usyk gave angles, the jab, some fast combinations, whereas Joshua stood his ground in the ring, put on the pressure when needed, not just by jabbing, but also with his footwork, and he made sure from the opening bell what his intent was. And you could see the adjustments that were made from his corner from Robert Garcia. I think it was a tactical fight up until about the middle rounds, but then in the ninth round, Anthony Joshua had Alexander Usyk hurt and troubled in all kinds of ways. It's just that Anthony Joshua didn't put on the pressure fully, didn't get him knocked down, didn't get his man out. One could wonder why Anthony Joshua didn't put on the pressure earlier on, which is what I expected in my preview. Then Alexander Usyk struck back in round 10, showing he could go up another gear, put on some combination, bullied AJ. Maybe AJ took some time off after he unloaded in round nine and he still held up really well. Yet Alexander Usyk proved why he is the unified heavyweight champion of the world. And then in the 12th, I believe Alexander Usyk put an exclamation mark on his performance by landing the cleaner shots, by fighting with passion, not going down, not wanting to take a step back and firing back at the 242 pound former two-time unified heavyweight champion of the world with an epic finish at the shores of Saudi Arabia. Number three, what's next for AJ? Well, since Anthony Joshua doesn't have any titles, he doesn't have any mandatories. To a year, I don't think he's enough. I would like to see him get out in December and I would like to see him have three to four fights next year, get back to enjoying himself, get back to the pressures of working his way back up to the championship belt, because yeah. for him it's, it's the enjoyment of fighting, it's the enjoyment of working with his team. And now I think he's gonna actually really start to enjoy himself. Meaning Anthony Joshua can fight whoever he wants, wherever he wants, without having to worry about his stock dropping. But what does Anthony Joshua want himself? And uh, if it's about who I fight, Come one, come all. Whoever wants it can get it. I don't mind. We'll go a bit more in depth on this topic in another episode, but there were great fights on the card, including a heavyweight contest, which Anthony Joshua may pick one of those fighters in his next fight. It would be great to see Anthony Joshua one more time before years end. And if Anthony Joshua indeed is comfortable with his setup with Robert Garcia and Angel Fernandez making some more adjustments, which gives him a chance to go out there and just have fun, fight against fighters that are top tier, but not as great as Usyk, as this will be part of his rebuilding process to maybe challenge for the world title sooner rather than later. Number four, undisputed. Everything's for sale and everything has a price. And 500 million is my price. And if anyone's willing to pay that, then they're willing and I will gladly give them what they want. Alexander Usyk wants Tyson Fury and we as boxing fans should want and demand that fight. I'm sure that Tyson Fury is not retired yet. I'm convinced he wants to fight me. I want to fight him. And if I'm not fighting Tyson Fury, I'm not fighting at all. Tyson Fury has vacated his ring magazine belt, which Alexander Usyk has picked up, but hasn't dropped his WBC belt, which means the ball is in Tyson Fury's corner. And what a matchup it would be. The bigger man who is tactically savvy, who can fight both ways on the outside and on the inside, which Anthony Joshua may have revealed some issues of Alexander Usyk. He did have a hard time in the ninth round, especially with the body attacks, the sustained body attack that Anthony Joshua put on Alexander Usyk. Yet Usyk is a master of making adjustments which he showed against Anthony Joshua. Tyson Fury in the past has shown to have difficulties against smaller guys who are moving targets, who are faster, who have great in and out footwork and fast hands. Well, Alexander Usyk in that department is the best in the current heavyweight division. Two undefeated guys, the first undisputed world championship since Lennox Lewis in 1999. It would be amazing to see this fight happen for all the world to see wherever that fight will take place. We're gonna do a breakdown, a potential matchup between Tyson Fury and 
Oleksandr Usyk and what would happen if the two undefeated heavyweight champions of the world would step into the ring today. Number five, interesting heavyweight division. With Oleksandr Usyk being victorious for a second time over Anthony Joshua, it shows that a smaller man can topple today's giants. Obviously, we're talking about a pound-for-pound -pound elite. We're talking about a first ballot Hall of Famer, the former undisputed cruiserweight world champion who won everything there is to win in the amateurs as a world champion, as an Olympic gold medalist, and as an undefeated campaigner at heavyweight, knowing that he started at the weight class below. We saw Filip Hrgovic edge out a win over Zili Zhang, who just like Filip Hrgovic was undefeated in a good fight. And that was a little bit unexpected for some, which goes to show that the talent pool at heavyweight is deep. You still have Joe Joyce, who's about to take on Joseph Parker, obviously Tyson Fury, and the usual suspects in the top 10, like Luis Ortiz and Andy Ruiz, who will have their showdown in September of 2022. This fight has opened up more conversations about the heavyweight division because we now have a clear winner in the Usyk versus Joshua rivalry, meaning the three belts that belong to Alexander Usyk will all be targets. Daniel Dubois for the WBA, the winner of Joseph Parker and Joe Joyce for the WBO world title, and Filip Hrgovic with the IBF. These are all interesting, intriguing fights, some of them undefeated. Oleksandr Usyk is undefeated, and so is Tyson Fury with that ever-lingering question. Who would be the last man standing in this current heavyweight division? So much more episodes to follow after this, God willingly. For now, let us know what your thoughts are on Oleksandr Usyk versus Anthony Joshua 2. Did you think post-fight AJ was a bit out of character? What did you think of Oleksandr Usyk's tough moments, especially in the ninth? A lot of answers that we are interested, drop them in the comments below and let's have a conversation. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up and hit that notification bell for the latest day on Ringside Stories. It helps us a lot with the algorithm here on YouTube, i.e. inspire us to make more quality content for y'all. Till next time, Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer with Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for watching and have a legendary day.